Once upon a time in a faraway land, a young prince lived in a shining castle. Although he had everything his heart desired, the prince was spoiled, selfish, and unkind. But then, one winter's night, an old beggar woman came to the castle. offered the prince a single rose in return for shelter from the bitter cold. Repulsed by her haggard appearance, the prince sneered at the gift and turned the old woman away. But she warned him not to be deceived by appearances, for beauty is found within. And when he dismissed her again, the old woman's ugliness melted away to reveal a beautiful enchantress. The prince tried to apologize, but it was too late, for she had seen that there was no love in his heart. As punishment, she transformed her. was truly an enchanted one that would bloom for many years. If he could learn to love another and earn their love in return by the time the last petal fell, then the spell would be broken. If not, he would be doomed to remain a beast for all time. As the years passed, he fell into despair and lost all hope. For who could ever learn to love a beast?
God. I'm afraid she's rather odd. Very different from the rest of us. She's nothing like the rest of us. Yes, different from the rest of us is that. I got it. I got it. I, I got it. Wow. You didn't miss a shot, Gaston. You're the greatest hunter in the whole world. I know. No beast alive stands a chance against you. And no girl for that matter. It's true, LaFou. Not on my heart, so I'm marrying that The inventor's daughter? She's the lucky girl I'm going to marry. But she's... The most beautiful girl in town. I know, but... And that makes her the best. And don't I deserve the best? Well, of course you do. Right from the moment when I met her, saw her, I said she's gorgeous and I fell. Here in town there's only she, who's beautiful as me, so making plans to ruin Mary Bell. books and paid attention to more important things. Hint, hint. Like you? Exactly. It's not right for a woman to read. First she starts getting ideas and then thinking. Gaston, you are positively primeval. Why, thank you, Val. Now, what do you say we go down to the tavern and have a look at all of my trophies? What do you say we don't? Oh, come on, Belle. I know how you feel about me. You can't even imagine. Gaston, please, I have to get home to help my father. That crazy old fool, he needs all the help he can get. Don't talk about my father that way. Yeah, don't talk about my father that way. My father's not crazy, he's a genius. <laughs> Some genius. What's a genius? <laughs> now, LeFou, I need you to go into the woods and find me the biggest, healthiest deer you can find. Not the woods. Anything but the woods. You know I hate the woods. Just get me a deer for my wedding feast. But I hate the woods. It's dark and spooky and there's bugs and spiders. Papa, are you all right? I'm fine, but I can't for the life of me figure out why that happened. That is the stubbornest piece of... Oh, Papa! I'm about ready to give up on this hunk of junk. You always say that. I mean it this time. I'm never going to get this bone in a contraption to work. Yes, you will, and you'll win first prize at the fair tomorrow. And become a world-famous inventor. You really think so? You know I do. I always have. Well, we'd better get cracking. This thing's not going to fix itself. Now, let me see. Where did I put that dog-legged clencher? Papa. So, tell me. Did you have a good time in town today? I got a new book. 
Love those books. Well, they take me away to wonderful places where there's adventure and mystery and romance and happy endings. Papa, if I ask you something, will you answer me honestly? Don't I always? Do you think I'm odd? My daughter, odd? Now where would you get an idea like that? <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's just that, well, people talk. They talk about me too. <laughs> No, we're not hot, it's true. No family could be saner, except one uncle who, well, maybe like that guy. Yes. In all you say or do, you couldn't make it plainer. You are your mother's daughter, therefore you are class. So I should just accept I'm simply not like them. They are the common herd, and you can take my word. You are unique, creme de la creme. No matter what you do, I'm on your side. <laughs> and if my point of view is somewhat misty-eyed, there's nothing clearer in my life than what I wish and feel for you. And that's a lot. No matter what. No matter what they say, you make me proud. I love the funny way you stand up from the crowd. It's my intention, my invention, shows the world out there one day just what we've got. No matter what. Now some may say all fathers just exaggerate That every daughter's great You are And every daughter tends to say her father's tops She pulls out all the stops To praise him and quite rightly No matter what the pain, we've come this far. I pray that you remain exactly as you are. This really is a case of father knowing best. And daughter too. You're never strange. Don't ever change. It's quite my best invention So simple yet complex, so massive yet so small This triumph of design will be my old age pension That is providing I can find the fair at all I must have missed a sign I should have paid attention That's not a nightingale
you not to let him in? We couldn't leave him for the wolves. Is anyone home? If we keep quiet, maybe he'll go away. Is someone there? Not one word, Lumia. Not one word. I don't mean to intrude, but I've lost my way in the woods, and I need a place to stay for the night. Poor fellow. Coxworth have a heart. Monsieur, you're welcome here anytime. I heard that. I know someone's there, and I'll thank you to step out where I can see you. Hello! Oh. And goodbye! Wait, wait, wait! You're a clock, and you're talking! Oh, astonishing, isn't it? And quite inexplicable. Now, goodbye. Hogsworth, I'm surprised at you. What are your manners? You know what the master will do if he finds out we knew we let a stranger in? This is incredible. How is this accomplished? Now, really, sir, if you just... Ow! Ow! Tiddy! Stop it! Stop it, I say! Really, sir, do you mind? Well, I'm stumped. Maybe it's some kind of newfangled scientific gadget. I, sir! I am not a gadget. Yeah. I beg your pardon. I don't mean to be rude. It's just that I've never seen a talk... a talkie... a talkie... a chill! Bless you. You are chill. Do they burn Monsieur Cobb? Warm yourself by the fire. No! I forbid it! Lumia! Oh no, not the master's chair! I'm not seeing this! I'm not seeing this! Oh la la! What are we here? Do my eyes deceive me or is this a man? It's been so long since I've seen a real man. No offense, Lumiere. Bonjour, monsieur. Mind if I sit here? Oh, well, hello. All right, this has gone on for too long. I'm in charge here, and I say... Let me through. How would you like a nice pot of tea, sir? It'll warm you up in no time. Oh. Yes, please. No, no tea. He'll be here all night. No tea. There you are. This is just what I need. Oh. I think I scared him, Mama. Hey there, little fellow. What's your name? Chip. Figures. Careful of the blankets, Monsieur. I just love all that men. I bet. You're always trying to make me jealous. Well, it's not going to work this time. Me? What about you with Simon? Jacques? Michel? Pierre? Veronique? <laughs> Veronique. <gasps> How? Lumiere, yeah, we've got to get him out of here. Do you have any idea what the master will do if he knows we let a stranger in? Oh, calm yourself, Coxworth. The master will never have to know. Yes! Oh, on second thoughts, he was bound to find out sooner or later. Shall we hide, Mama? No, no. Remain calm. There's no reason to panic. Lumi has right. There's, there's no reason to panic. Ooh. May I borrow this? <laughs> there's a stranger here. Ooh, master, may I to explain the gentleman was sent upon here by wolf. Who let him in? Master, may I say I was against it from the start. Who dared to disobey me? Oh, dear. You have all betrayed me. Who are you? Maurice. And what are you doing in my castle? I lost my way in the woods. You're not welcome here. I'm sorry. I'll just be on my way. No. Oh. It's hideous, isn't it? Oh, no, no. You've come to stare at the beast, haven't you? No, I meant no harm. I was merely looking for a place to stay. I'll give you a place to stay. <laughs> Change your feelings for me. Oh no, 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 never. 
And we'll still have our little Rondes boots, won't we? Oh, yeah, yes. Oh, yes. Good, good. Well, there's going to be a wedding. I suppose I should propose to the bride. <laughs> Isn't it though, I'm just full of surprises. For you, Mademoiselle. A miniature portrait of you. <laughs> you shouldn't have. Don't mention. Belle, there isn't a girl in town who wouldn't love to be in your shoes. Today's the day I make your dreams come true. What could you possibly know about my dreams, Gaston? Plenty. You've been dreaming just one dream nearly all your life. Hoping, scheming, just one to be. Will you be Hawaii? Will you be something that's property? Good news that he met me. This equation, girl plus man, doesn't help just you. On occasion, women can have their uses too. Mainly to extend the family tree. Pumpkin, extend. Each built six foot four. Unbelievable. Each one stuffed with every dust on sheen. I'm not hearing no this. You've been house with pride. That's incredible. Each day gratified. So unbelievable. That you are part of this idyllic scene. Picture this. I'm rustic hunting large. Well, I just kill, roasting above the fire. My little wife massaging my feet. While the little ones play on the floor with the dogs. Oh, we'll have six or seven. Dogs? No, Belle. Shopping boys, like me. Imagine that. I can see that we will share all that love in lies. We shall be the perfect pair, rather like my thighs. You are face to face with destiny. All roads lead to the best things in life are all's well that ends with me. Escape me, there's no way certain as do Bell when you marry. So Bell, what will it be? Is it a yes or is it oh yes? <laughs> I just don't deserve you. Who does? Me! But thanks for asking. So how'd it go? Oh, you know that bell. Always playing hard to get. She turned you down! No, oh, no. But I will have Bell's my wife. Make no mistake about that. Well, gee. If she turned him down, maybe I'd love a chance! No! 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 Is he gone? Oh, can you imagine? He asked me to marry him. Me, the wife of that boorish, brainless. Madame Gaston, can you just see it? Madame Gaston, his little wife. Oh, no sir, not me. I want so much more than they've got planned. Hey, Belle! Have you
Have you seen Gaston? You just missed him. Wait a minute, where did you get that scarf? This? In the woods. Pretty nice, huh? This belongs to my father. Yeah, well, finders keepers. LeFou, I want you to think hard and tell me exactly where you found that. Uh, no. Think. Somewhere in the woods. Harder? In the crossroads, okay? Ow. Then he's still out there somewhere. LeFou, you have to take me back. Not the woods again. Don't you see? Something must have happened. You have to take me back. Not on your life. Then I'll find him myself. Quiet, could we? Just had to invite him to stay, didn't we? Serve him tea! Sit him in the master's chair! I was trying to be hospitable! Rubbish! Oxworth, can you blame me for trying to maintain what's left of our humanity? Look at us! And look at you! What about me? You were always insufferable! But every day you became a little more inflexible. A little more tightly wound. <laughs> a little bit ticked off. <laughs> Please, spare me the stupid puns. At least we are not as far gone as some of the others. You saw what happened to Michelle. Oh, she always was too vain about her looks, and that's exactly what she's become. A vanity. Little drawers, mirrors, the works. And poor Jean-Claude. Who? Jean-Claude, you remember? Not too bright. Dumb as... A brick? The whole wall. Jean-Claude's a brick wall? That's him in the kitchen, behind the stove. And you remember Guillaume the houseboy? Ooh, that meaning out little bootlegger. I've never liked him. Oh, he's groveling at the master's feet. <laughs> he's a doormat. Ooh, perfect. It's happening faster with some of the others, but we are not far behind. Slowly and surely, as every day passes, we will all just gradually become things. Oh, but why did we have to get wrapped up in this spell business? It's not like we threw that poor old beggar woman out on her ear. No, but are we not to blame? for helping to make him the way he is. I suppose so. All that I know is that I will eventually melt away into nothing. I only hope there's something left in me, even if the master breaks this spell. We've got to hold on, old man. We've got to hold on. Hello? Is anyone here? Hello? It's a girl. Yes, I can see it's a girl. <gasps> it's a girl! Mademoiselle! No, I want to do the talking. Oh, Shelly! No, I want to talk! Out! One word, no. please! No, I want to say the word! <laughs> Mama, you're not going to believe what I saw. Not a million thousand years. Not a million trillion thousand years. Yes, dear. No, really. This is the greatest thing. It's the thing that everybody's been waiting for. Since... Since, since I don't know when. All right, Jim, what is it? There's a girl in the castle. Oh, well, bless my soul, wouldn't that be lovely? But there is, I saw her. Now, Chip, I'll not have you making up these wild stories, getting everybody's hopes up for no reason. Mrs. Potts, did you hear? There's a girl in the castle. <laughs> See, told ya. And she's real pretty, too. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> Oh, Cogsworth, this is the one. The girl we've been waiting for. She's come to break the spell. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's not be hasty. This is a happy day. Come, come. Oh, no. I will stop it. Stop oh, that. Come, we should tell the others. No. Yes. I mean, no. I mean, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hello? Is anyone here? Please. Uh, I'm looking for my father. Oh, is that you? Papa? Papa! How did you find me? Papa, your hands are like ice. We have to get you out of here. Belle, you must leave this place. Who's done this to you? There's no time to explain. You must go. Now! I won't leave you here. Who's there? I know someone's there. Who are you? The master of this castle. Then you're the one responsible for this. Release my father at once. I am the master of this castle, and I do not take orders from anyone. Get out! No, wait. Forgive me. 
please let him out. Can't you see? He's not well. He should not have trespassed here. But he's an old man. He could die. He came into my home uninvited, and now he'll suffer the consequences. Please, I'll do anything. No. There is nothing you can do. Wait, please. I said there is nothing you can do. Take me instead. No. What did you say? Take me instead. Belle, you don't know what you're doing. You would do that. You would take his place. If I did, would you let him go? Yes. But you must promise to stay here forever. No! Forever? Forever! Or he dies in the dungeon. Wait, that's not fair! Wait. Step into the light. Make your choice. Belle, listen to me. I'm old. I've lived my life. You have my word. Oh. Done. No. Oh, no, Papa. I'm begging you. Please spare my daughter. Take him to the crossroads. Please, oh, not yet. Let her go. Let her go. Belle. Papa. Belle. Master. Oh, Master, please. Since the girl is staying with us for quite some time, you may want to offer her a more comfortable room. You didn't let me say goodbye. What? I'll never see him again. And you didn't even let me say goodbye. I'll show you to your room. My room? But I thought... Do you want to stay in the dungeon? No. Then follow? You follow me! The castle is your home now, so you're free to go anywhere you like, except the West Wing. Why? What's in the West Wing? It's forbidden! You are never to sit foot there, do you understand? Do you understand? Yes. This is your room, I hope you'll be comfortable here. If you need anything, my servants will attend you. One more thing. You'll join me for dinner. That's not a request! <laughs> yes, I made the choice. Papa, I will stay. But I don't deserve to lose my freedom in this way, you monster!
Who is it? Mrs. Potts. I thought you might like some tea. Come in. Oh, there's nothing like a nice warm cup of tea to make the world seem a bit brighter. <laughs> but your, your, Mrs. Potts, dear. Very pleased to meet your acquaintance. Careful, darling. <laughs> Who are you? Madame de la Grande Bouche. Perhaps you've heard of me. I'm sorry. You see, they've forgotten all about me. I was once, and I quote, the toast of Europe, the brightest star to ever grace the stage, but fell under one little shh. Wait, this, this is impossible. I know it is, but here we are. Now, what should we dress you in for dinner? This is nice. But how about you borrow one of my gowns? Let's see what I have in my drawers. Ah, uh, here we are. I wore this the night I performed at the Royal Opera. The king himself was there. So I wouldn't have a prayer for him to it now. Take it! That's very kind of you, but I'm not going to dinner. Don't be silly, of course you are. You heard what the master said. He may be your master, but he is not mine. Oh, oh I'm sorry. This is all just happening so fast. That was a very brave thing you did, my dear. Do all think so? I'm just gonna miss my papa so much. Oh, cheer up, child. I know things may seem bleak right now, but you mustn't despair. We're here to see you through. I hope that we'll be friends, though I don't know you well. If anyone can make the most of living here. Thanks. 
every morning to help me get large. And now that I'm grown, I need five dozen eggs, so I'm roughly the size of a boy.
What is it? Is dinner ready, Mrs. Potts? Just about. I haven't the foggiest idea what the girl likes to eat, so I've cooked up just about everything in the kitchen. Good. Good? <gasps> well, don't just stand there gaping. Get back to work. You tell him. I can't. Tell me what? Now, don't be alarmed. But you appear to have something on your back. What on earth are you talking about? What is that? A winding handle of sorts. Well, get it off me! What's <laughs> coming? It won't come off. What do you mean it won't come off? It wasn't there last night when I went to bed. Where did it come from? Why is this happening to me? It's a spell, I'm afraid. Just try to relax. Relax? Relax? How can I relax when there's a appendage on my back? Is there no dignity left for me? What's going to go next, my mind? Calm yourself, my friend. It will be all right. I'm frightened, Junior. I know. But you are not alone. We are all in this together. It's time for dinner. Where is she? Perhaps I will see about her. Won't be a minute. I told her to come down. What's taking so long? Please try to be patient, sir. The girl has lost her father and her freedom all in one day. Oh, master. Have you thought this girl could perhaps be the one to break the spell? Of course I have. I'm not a fool. <laughs> Good. So, you fall in love with her, she falls in love with you, and poof, the spell is broken, and we human again by midnight. Oh, yeah, it's not that easy. These things take time. You don't have time. The rose has already begun to wilt. It's no use. She is so beautiful, and I'm... Well, look at me. He's got a point. Shh. <laughs> Master, you have to try to help her see past all that. I don't know how. Well... You could start by making yourself more presentable. Straighten up. Try to act like a gentleman. And impress her with your rapier wit. But be gentle. And show her with confidence. But be sincere. And, and above, above all. What? You must control your temper. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> well? What? <laughs> Where is she? Who? Oh, right! The girl! Right. Well, you know, she's in the process of mm. circumstances being what they are, and no, um, she's not coming. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Um, she's not coming? <laughs> we'll see about that! No, go on, you won't! Call stay where you are! You may have help. Stand aside! <sighs> I thought I told you to come down to dinner. I'm not hungry. I am the master of this castle, and I am telling you to come to dinner. And I'm telling you I'm not hungry. You're hungry if I say you're hungry. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> what did you say? You can't go around ordering people to be hungry. It doesn't work like that. I can. Besides, it's rude. Oh. Rude, is it? Well, then how about this? If you don't come down to dinner, I will drag you by the hair! Master, that may not be the best way to win her affections. Please attempt to be a gentleman. Why is she being so difficult? Why are you being so difficult? Why are you being such a bully? Oh. <laughs> because I want you to come down to dinner. So you admit you're being a bully. Deep breaths, Master. Deep breaths. Breaths in, out. There. I will give her one last chance. Would you be so kind as to join me for dinner? Ah, wait, please. Thank you. Fine! Then starve! Oh, please. If she doesn't eat with me, she doesn't eat at all. What were we thinking? 
We'll never be human again. So it appears. Well, what would you two have us do? Give up? Because I'm not giving up until I hear the sound of my little boy's laughter as he's running through these falls again. Quite right, Mrs. Potts. We mustn't give up while there's still a chance. Lumiere, stand guard by the door and alert me if there's any change at once. Oui, mon capitaine. Let's go. I ask nicely, but she refuses. What does she want me to do, a bed? <sighs> Show me the girl. I know the master can be temperamental, but underneath all that matted fur, he's not such a bad guy. Why don't you give him a chance? Why should I? Did he give my father a chance? Well, no. But once you get to know him... I don't want to get to know him. I don't want to have anything to do with him. It's no use. She'll never see me as anything but a monster. How long must this go on, this cruel trick of fate? I simply made one careless wrong decision. And then that which was gone and left me in this state, an object of revulsion and derision. Hey, it did. Is there no one who can show me how to win the world's forgiveness? Oh, what did they say? Shower her with compliments, impress her with your wit. Act like a gentleman. Act like a gentleman. Act like a gentle man. Babette, come to me, my little fluff. Mon Dieu! No, you really tickle my fancy. Oh no. Oh yes. Oh no. Oh yes. Oh no no no. I've been burnt by you before. <laughs> Actually, madame, I, I am a little hungry. I'll run through the spots and send you an aria while we wait. Think of me, think of me for to me wait. Oh, that's all right. I'll go myself. Well, what about the master? You heard what he said. He won't like this. I know. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I like this girl. I like her spunk. Well, if you ask me, she was just being rude. After all, he did say please. I think that may be the first time I've ever heard him use that word. I believe you're right. You see? She's already starting to have a better influence on him. Oh, there you are, dearie. So glad to see you out and about. I am Cogsworth, head of the household. Cogsworth? The girl? Oh, she's gone! I swear, I swear, my eyes, they never left this kiss room. Oh. Oh. Ma chère, mademoiselle. This is Lumiere. Stop it! Stop that! If there's anything we can do to make your stay more hospitable, anything, anything at all. I am a little hungry. Oh, except that. Oh, ah, you heard what the master said. Oh, pish tosh. I'm not about to let the poor child go hungry. Fine. Glass of water, crust of bread, and then Cogsworth. I'm surprised at you. She's not a prisoner. She's a guest. We must make her feel welcome here. All right, dinner. But keep it down. If the master finds out, it'll be our necks. Of course, of course, but what is dinner without a little, um, music? Music! Oh, uh, ma chère mademoiselle, it is with deepest pride and greatest pleasure that we welcome you here tonight. And now, we invite you to relax. Let us pull up a chair as this dining room proudly presents your dinner. Oh. Guest be our guest, put our service to the test. Tie a napkin round your neck, Sherry, and we provide the rest. Soup du jour, hot hors d'oeuvre, why, we only live to serve. 
Try the grey stuff. It's delicious. Don't believe me. Ask the dishes. They can say. Be our guest, be our guest. Be friendly, she souffle, pie and pudding on flambe. We pour hair and serve with flair a culinary cabaret. You're alone and you're scared. The favorite's over there. No one's gloomy or complaining while the flatware's entertaining. We do jokes, I do tricks with my salt and pepper sticks. And it's all in perfect taste. It's fine dining, we suggest Be our guest, be our guest, be our guest oh. Be our guest, be our guest Get your worries off your chest Let us in where you are trying to be Try the bread, try the soup, when the curtains look deep. It's a treat for any diner, don't believe me, ask the china. Singing pork, dancing beer, what an entertaining meal. How can anyone be gloomy or depressed? Go make you shout, encore, and send us out for more, so be our guest. Be our guest. Be our guest. Shameless! Shameless! Oh 
such a good idea. You know, we can't tell you know who go poking around you know where. You don't know what I mean. Perhaps you'd like to take me. I'm sure you know everything there is to know about the castle. Uh, well, actually, I mean, I, I do. Uh, may I then draw your attention to the hand-painted ceilings, complete with cherubs, frolicking in delight amongst the nymphs and centaurs. Act like a gentleman. Act like a gentleman. This will be good. Oh, Belle! Uh, Belle? Now, if you will look over here, you will see the unusual inverted archways that are another example of the late neoclassic Baroque period. And as I always say, if it ain't Baroque, don't fix it! <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, in that case, uh, check over here, we have the flying buttresses above the aviary. Oh, Lumiere, it's all so beautiful. I had no idea. If only he weren't here. Act like a gentleman. I'm nothing but a fool. And now, thanks to some quick thinking on my part, that disaster was averted. And that was the last time a stone of that weight was quarried into this area. What's up there? Nothing! Nothing at all of any interest in the West Wing. Oh, so that's the West Wing. He's going. I wonder what he's hiding up there. <laughs> hiding? Hiding? What an idea! Hiding! <laughs> <laughs> well, then it wouldn't be forbidden, would it? Oh, perhaps Mademoiselle would like to see something else then. You know, we have exquisite tapestries dating all the way back to Aloysius the Potentials! Maybe later. Perhaps Mademoiselle would like to see the gardens. No? Or, or maybe... <gasps> or the library! Y you have a library? With books! Yes! Scads of books! Mountains of books! Forests of books, cascades, cloudbursts, just swamps and swamps of books. Books with pictures and books with words. Oh, more words than you could ever read in a lifetime. Books on every subject, from every author who puts pen to paper. See, but deep within is utter 
dark blindness hopeless as my dream dies as the time flies love a lost illusion helpless unforgiven cold and driven to this sad conclusion no beauty could move me no goodness improve me no power on earth if I can't love her no passion could reach me no lesson could teach me how I could have loved her and make her love me too if I can't love her, then who? Long ago I should have seen All the things I could have been Careless and unthinking I moved on not to be if I can't love her. Let the world be done with me.
still. Ah, that hurts. If you won't still, it wouldn't hurt as much. Well, if you hadn't run away, this wouldn't have happened. If you hadn't frightened me, I wouldn't have run away. Well, you shouldn't have been in the West Wing. And you should learn to control your temper. <sighs> Just hold still. This may sting a little. By the way, thank you for saving my life. You're welcome. <laughs> That's more like it. I knew they could get along with each other. So the ice is broken. At last. And not a moment too soon, either. Have you taken a good look at the rose lately? It's losing petals at an alarming rate. And not to mention the fact that I can hardly bend over at all anymore. Clearly. It's time we gave them a little push. We need a nice romantic way to draw them closer together. I have just the thing. How about we warm you two up with a nice bowl of soup? Soup? Trust me. There's something sweet and almost kind. But he was mean and he was coarse and unrefined. And now he's dear and so unsure. I wonder why I didn't see it there before. She glanced this way, I thought I saw. Then when we touched, she didn't shudder at my paw. No, it can't be, I'll just ignore. But then she's never looked at me that way before. When she smiles at me, I get all choked up. My heart starts pounding and I can't breathe. Good! That's good, Master. That's excellent. I've never felt this way about anyone. I want to give her something, but... Well, there's the usual things. Flowers and chocolates, roses, and, of course, promises you don't intend to keep. Mm. Oh, this is no ordinary girl. She did have something special, something that sparks her interest. <gasps> what? Are you sure? Positive. Great taste. Well, I've got nothing to lose. Time is right. This is the perfect gift. Oh, sure, a clock, a candle, and a beast are gonna figure out how to woo this beautiful woman. <sighs> Say something about the dress. It's pink. A compliment. Oh, um, what a nice dress. Thank you. Um, Belle, I'd like to show you something, but first you have to close your eyes. It's a surprise. Please get the girl! And it's yours. I can't. You know 
ever learned to read? Only a little, uh, and long ago. Well, it just so happens that this is the perfect book to read out loud. Come here, sit by me. Well, who'd have thought? Oh, bless my soul. Who'd have known? Who indeed? Who'd have guessed they come together on their own? It's so peculiar. Wait and see. A few days more, there may be something there that wasn't there before. Perhaps there's something there that wasn't there before. What? There may be something there that wasn't there before. What's there, Mama? Shh, I'll tell you when you're older. Come along now, let's give them some privacy. Mama? Yes, Chip? Will I ever get to be a boy again? I hope so. When will I know? Soon. If it's to be, it'll be very soon now. Come along, son. Knowing that, that this was indeed the legendary sword called Excalibur, Arthur tried to pull it from the stone. He tried once, but to no avail. He tried a second time, but he still could not pull it out. Then, for the third time, Arthur drew forth the sword. Oh, so that must mean he's the king. Wait and see. I never knew books could do that. Do what? Take me away from this place and make me forget for a little while. Forget? Who I am. What I am. You and I have something in common, you know. What? In the town where I come from. Really? People think I'm odd. You? So I know how it feels. To be different, and I know how lonely that can be. For the third time, Arthur drew forth the sword, and there arose from the people a great shout Arthur is king. I told you so. They're still in there? Yes. And so far, he's been a perfect gentleman. Oh, you know what? I have a funny feeling inside. I don't know what it is, but it makes me feel kind of bubbly. It's hope, son. I've been feeling it too. We, my little friend, the day we've been waiting for. Maybe it's him. Oh, if only that were true, Amelia. Ah, human again. Human again? Yes. And just think of what that means. I'll be cooking again, be good looking again, with the mademoiselle on charm. When I'm human again, only human again, pushed and punished, gleaming with charm. I'll be courting again, she can sporting again. Which will cause several husbands alive. I'll hop down off the shelf and soon sweet be myself. I can't wait to be human again. When we're human again, only human again. When we're knickknacks and whatnots no more. Little push, little shove, they can wish for love. I shall you won't it all be top drawer. Now when lipstick and rouge, and I won't be so huge, while I'll easily fit through that door. Oh, the suits of our fair, of a gown, all unfair, it's my prayer to be human again. When I'm human again, only human again, when the world once more starts making sense, I'll unwind for a change. Really? That would be strange. Can I help in it if I'm too tense? In a shack by the sea, I'll sit back sipping tea, let my earlier retirement commence. Far from fools made of wax, I'll get down to brass tacks and relax! I'm human again! on the door. When Guinevere 
heard that Arthur was slain, she stole away to a convent that no one could ever make her smile again. That's the end. What a beautiful story. Oh, I knew you'd like it. I'd like to ask you for something. What? A second chance? Would you have dinner with me tonight? A dinner? Me? With you? Let it be. I mean... Oh, yes! And we're human again, only human again, when the girl finally sets us all free. Cheeks are blooming again, we're assuming again, we'll resume our long lost rendezvous. We'll be playing again, holidaying again, and we're praying. Check it. 
My sword is so Master, the night you confess your love. Well, I really don't think I can do this. Oh, you must care for the girl, don't you? More than anything. Then why not tell her? I can't. Oh, no, you must. There will be beautiful music, romantic candlelight, provided by myself. And when the moment is just right. Oh, Lumiere, how will I know when the moment is right? Oh, you'll feel slightly nauseous. Cops for it. <laughs> no, you will not because you will feel it here. And you must speak from the heart. I must speak from the... Yes. Oh, I can't! Oh, you must! Master, what are you afraid of? Nothing. Master, please. <coughs> I'm afraid she might... She might what? Laugh at me. Oh. That is enough out of you two. Somehow, my prince, you must find the courage to take a chance. Oh, Master, look at the rose. There's so little time left. I really don't think I can do this. Ah, here. Time. Try and look into this. That might help to bolster your courage. Uh -huh. You can do it, Master. I know you can.
don't you? It's past your bedtime. Good night, love. Thank you for asking me to dinner. Dinner was wonderful. <coughs> Belle. Yes? Are you happy here? Oh, yes. Everyone is so kind. Mrs. Potts, Lumiere. With me? to speak from the heart. Is something wrong? I was just thinking about my father. I miss him so much I wish I could see him just one more time. There is a way. This mirror will show you anything, anything you wish to see. I'd like to see my father. Go to him. What? You should go to him. But what about... You're not my prisoner anymore. You haven't been for a long time. Take it with you. So that way you'll always have a way to look back and remember me. I could never forget you. See her again. Well, sire, I must say, everything is just going swimmingly. I knew you had it in you. I let her go. <gasps> you what? How could you do that? I do. But why? After all this time, he's finally learned to love. That's it then. You should break this spell. It's not enough. She must learn to love him in return. And now it's too late. No spell has been broken. No words have been spoken. No point anymore if she can't So I finally know that I shall always be in this hopeless state and condemned to wait, wait for death to set me. Terrible, Papa. 
In the beginning, I was so frightened. I thought it was the end of everything, but somehow things changed. How? I don't know, but I see him differently now. It's funny, when I look around, I see the whole world differently. There's been a change in me, a kind of moving on. Though what I used to be, I still depend upon. For now I realize that good can come from bad. That may not make me want, but oh, it makes me glad and I Delusion. The beast was real, and so was the talking clock. <laughs> Poor Belle. It's a shame about your father. Gaston, you know he's not crazy. I might be able to clear up this little misunderstanding. If. If what? If you'll marry me. What? One more, Belle. That's all it takes. Never. Oh. Fine. Have it your way. Take the old man! Wait, wait! I can prove my father's not crazy. Show me the beast. Ah! That's him! That's him! Is he dangerous? Oh no. I know he looks frightful, but he never hurt anyone. He's really kind and gentle. He's my friend. If, if I didn't know that, I'd say you have feelings for this monster. It's not the monster to stop you all. She says this creature is a fright. That's the evil you do. They'll make off your children. They'll come after them in the night. He would never do that. Forget the old man. I say, we kill the beast. Kill yeah. yeah. 
We're not safe until he's dead. He'll come stalking us at night. Such a sacrifice of children to the monsters that we tight. So we gathered our village and we let him wander free. So it's time to take some action, boys. It's time to follow me. The mist through the wood, through the darkness and the shadows. It's a nightmare, but it's one exciting ride. Say a prayer. We're there at the drawbridge of the castle And there's something truly terrible inside It's a feast, he's a fan to the short ones Massive paws to the cause for the feast Emeralds in foam, but we're not coming home Till he's dead, good and dead Kill the beast I won't let you do this Try and stop us Oh, Papa, this is all my fault I have to go back and warn him I'm coming with you No I lost you once, Bell I'm not going to lose you again We'll rid the village of the beast. Who's with me? I am! I am! I am! Light your torch, match your horse. Screw your courage to the stinking place. We're counting on that song to lead the way. And this monster is mysterious at least With your friends, with your knives, and your children and your wives will save our village and our lives Tell the beast Take whatever booty you can find But remember, the beast is mine Hearts of flames, when there's high We go marching into Babylon Afraid of all the dangers just in Greece Please have flags, sing a song Here we come, we're 50 strong And 50 present can be wrong Get out! 
Bell. I'm sorry. You came back. Take my hand. At least, I got to see you one last time. We're together now. You'll see. No, I... Uh... We are home. We are where we shall be forever. Trust in me, for you know I won't run away. within the man who's here before you. It is you. Oh, my. Oh, goodness me. This is what's... What's happening here? Come on, sword of Darien. Stop, stop it. it. Stop that. The spell is broken. What? Human again. Oh my Lumia, come here! Oh, the soft of that! Mrs. Potts! Yes. Lumia, you have hands! Cotsworth, you've perfected your hair. <laughs> Belle, let's go find your father. Who was that young man? No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. It most certainly was. But we look handsome. I bet. You look so much better. What do you mean? I thought you liked the way I looked before. No, I, I did. It's just I like you better this way. Then you were lying to me. No, I wasn't. Yes, you were. No, I wasn't. Yes, you were. Thank you, Cogsworth. Maybe they have to leave this gown for me after all these years. Oh, it's magnificent and excelsius, my dear. No, I wore this when I had the court of the royal opera. The king himself was there. I know, my dear. You were wonderful. Oh, Cogsworth. Mama! Mama! Oh, my My dear, of course. Do I still have to sleep in the cupboard? Oh, no.
As you know, it's our final show of the weekend and of this show. And this is the last show for some of our people here, um, the seniors especially. Um, so can I ask all the seniors to step forward? First, uh, for Vanessa Joseph, thank you for helping with our crew this year and being there to put out any fires that might have started. <laughs> so the next is Sydney Manzo. Uh, thank you as well for helping with our crew and always being on top of things for your side of the stage. Uh, next is Cameron Connolly. Uh, thank you for joining us and helping in your last year here. It's our first year of stream, so yeah. Come on. <laughs> uh, next is Patrick Milner. Uh, thank you for helping to shine the light upon our stage as he did so well. Uh, next is Megan Burke. No one could handle the role of middle plate quite like you did. And you will definitely be missed by everyone here. So next is Isla Suku. Uh, thank you for making the bed to the standards of Mama Veda, wherever she is. And thank you for keeping the stage crew fun. Next is Jenna Sabia. Uh, thank you to our chief of the stage crew, helping to try to keep us all together when we fall apart. Uh, so Meredith McDonald, uh, you kept us all laughing from Madame Tandier to Madame de la Grande Bouche, or whatever your name is. <laughs> and I bet you will continue to make people laugh through college, but we unfortunately will have to miss it. So, Sean Fassi, uh, as you heard the Beast say in the last performance, uh, he finally got his hair in order. Um, so now you can finally go and relax, because you're human again. Uh, Angelica Zaccarola, right from your first play, you made a giant impact on everyone you knew. Uh, you will always put a bit of yourself in your roles, and your flair will be missed for probably forever, so... So, Leanna Nofrio, the clock seems to have struck midnight on your high school career, but you never failed to hit every high note that Mr. Chuba gave to you. Uh, and I bet he's proud of you even though he will never say it. So. So Mary Keaton, uh, we will miss you from our stage, right from the baker's wife through to Belle. You've always managed to somehow amaze us all. And finally, uh, Paul Keegan, uh, you've been amazing right from the baker to the beast. You are one of the greatest people I know, who has truly left a mark on all of us, and you will be missed by all of us. Unfortunately, I have to thank other people now. Um, first, to our art teacher, Mrs. Strasser, for helping out with makeup. Come up. <laughs> um, 
next to our club moderator, uh, Mrs. Morales. Um, to our choreographer, Mrs. Hong. To our wonderful music director, who I just mentioned, named Mr. Chuba. <laughs> to our faculty advisor and jack of all trades, Mrs. Marzik. So we have some of our awesome dads who helped build this set behind us. Uh, first is Mr. Straza. Our next is Mr. Conroy. is Mr. Williams. So now we have our great moms that helped us along with everything as mothers do. Uh, first, Mrs. Barbara Keegan. Next is Mrs. or Miss Percy Zaccarola. Is your mom? Okay, and your mom. Hey, mom. to Mrs. Janet Mitchell. Our, our next is Mrs. Marlena Sabia. Mrs. Chris Keaton. Our next is Mama Straza. Our next is Mama Anofria. Our next is the biggest standard holder of the moms, Mama Veda. wonderful, most amazing director. Uh, we truly couldn't have put this on without you, because we're high school students, how would we do that? Um, Karen Randazzo.
So, that is it for our thank yous, and we'd like to give it back to my brother Jack for the winning numbers of the raffle.